Ladies and gentlemen, your roast master for this evening, the one, the only, Buddy Boyle! Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Town Cries Club. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we're here to roast one of our own, the king of late night comedy, a true legend in the history of show business. But we couldn't get Johnny Carson, so we had to settle for this dummy. <laughs> but let's get the show rolling. It is not the duty of a roastmaster to bore you, but to introduce those who will. <laughs> Well, this is an evening that we'll all remember until we get back to our cars in the parking lot. <laughs> We've honored many uh, great men in this club, and tonight, we're making an exception. <laughs> <laughs> kind of breaks up the monotony. <laughs> you know, my husband, Danny, was recently featured as a centerfold in the Yellow Pages <laughs> under small appliances. <laughs> Danny and I sat down the other night to recall the highlights of his life, and we both fell asleep. As Danny's head writer, he also asked me to write his will. You'll be happy to know that Danny Duke has willed his brain to medical science. But medical science is contesting the will. <laughs> I've been with Danny a long, long time. You know why he has so many old friends? Because it can't make any new ones. <laughs> hey! Clever, clever. Wonderful, Jerry. You were never funnier. And it's a shame. <laughs> All right, I want a warm welcome for our own town crier, Danny Duke. <laughs> That's it. Danny, come up here, baby. Get up here and defend yourself. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, thank you. Hey, it's nice to be here and see so many familiar facelifts. <laughs> Thanks for that wonderful introduction, buddy. <laughs> you know, Buddy is a great comedian. I've always enjoyed his joke. <laughs> <laughs> He's a really versatile guy, really. He's writing his own autobiography. It's called Coma. <laughs> and now, are you ready? Yeah. No, no, I mean, are you ready? Yeah! Are you ready for Danny? I need a complete dusting for prints. Get it. Okay, I want a full set of photos. Took them. We'll need the electrical schematics on the room. Got it. 
Well, what do you need me for, Lil? <laughs> well, who said I did? Now you know what it feels like. Cause of death, Lily. Electrocution. They roasted the host. The charge into the body through the hand holding the microphone. Poor guy was in the middle of a joke. Never got to the punchline. I guess somebody didn't like his act. You're telling me. Take a look at this cord. It's melted. The microphone line leads to this. Some sort of black box. Hot wired to 220 volts of raw power. That's, That's your, your murder, murder weapon. weapon. <laughs> Lily, with 220 volts entering this microphone, why weren't the other speakers electrocuted? It must be a trigger mechanism. If there is, I'll find it. That's why we pay you the big bucks. I can't believe it. What's going to happen to the family? I'm sorry to keep you all waiting. What happened, Chief? Was it an accident? We think it's murder. Murder? What? murder? Who would murder Danny? That's what we're going to find out. No, I can't believe that. Well, we all touched the mic. Any one of us could have been killed. No, he's That's right. right. Wait, hold it. I, I was on first. I had the mic. Nothing happened. I think Danny was the designated victim. What a way to go. He was on a roll. Well, at least he died with his jokes on. Very funny, Hank. Very we funny. may need to talk to all of you, sir. Uh, Chief, you're not going to tell us not to leave town, are you? Buddy, you took the words right out of my mouth. What have you done to my morning paper? <laughs> it's not funny. It depends where you're sitting. Henry. I just don't appreciate how much money I save with all these coupons. It's not worth cutting up my paper. Maybe we can get two papers. You don't understand. Last week, I saved $12. The week before that... Commendable, Henry. But why don't you wait until I finish reading the newspaper before you start cutting it up? Saved by the bell. <laughs> Hello. Fine, I'll tell him. Thanks a lot. That was Danny Duke's producer, Harry Waters. He's at the Town Criers Club. Says it's urgent. Let's go live up to our press. We love you, Danny. Oh, yes, we do. We love you, Danny. And we'll be true. When you're not near us, we're blue. Oh, Danny, we love you. Very nice, very nice. What's all this? I'm producing a uh, memorial special for Danny. I'm going to put together some best of Danny takes, and uh, we'll put in some song and dance, a few jokes. Should do huge numbers. Very sensitive, Harry. The show must go on, Chief. And so must the investigation. No problem. OK, girls, everybody take an hour for lunch. I'm going to miss Danny. Were you and Danny good friends? Eh, what does that mean? I hate him. Enough to kill him? You don't kill the goose that lays the golden jokes. What'd you call us, Harry? Well, Danny left a video will. In the event of my death by murder or mysterious circumstance, this will and testament is to be played with the following people in attendance. You're on the list. Me? Why? Well, as soon as everybody else gets here, we'll find out. Talk about being depressed. I know nobody could live forever, but I sure wanted to. You know, I still can't believe I'm dead. And what really kills me is everybody knows what happened but me. I hate being left out. Anyhow, I couldn't resist this one last chance to talk to my friends and my family. Are you ready for Danny? <laughs> Hello, Jinxie. Our marriage was like a three-ring circus. Engagement ring, wedding ring, and suffering. Give me a break. My beloved wife, Jinxie, I leave a shoe shine kit, and she knows what she can do with it. Bastard. And now to my opponent on the other networks, Big Hank Whitaker. To you, I leave my audience, which is something you wish that you had. Hey, listen, I can use every extra rainy point I can get. And to my longtime suffering sidekick, Jerry Mars. To you, I leave a gold-plated banana. Just to remind you of the second banana that you hated being all these years. He's making me lose respect for the dead. And now to my old pal, Buddy Boyle, a great comic. Just ask him. To you, I leave my file of jokes. Really? No, thanks. I, uh, 
Never accept stolen property. And now, from a has-been to a never-was, young Johnny Lake. Johnny, you've always wanted my career. Well, I leave you my entire book of press clippings. Believe me, kid, they're the only good reviews you'll ever get. Good old Danny. Never hits a man when he's down. Oh, to my beloved head writer, Roxanne North. To you, sweetheart, I bequeath my magnifying glass. Use it on your scripts. Maybe you'll find a joke in there somewhere. I'm gonna miss you, Danny, for a minute. Ah, oh, Harry Waters, my big shot head producer. Harry Waters, yeah, you hated me all these years, didn't you, Harry? But I made you a rich man. Well, your golden goose leaves you a goose egg. Zip, nothing. I tell him to go to hell, but I know he's there already. And now to my devoted but weird son, Gerard, who always wanted to be mentioned in my will. Hello, Gerard. To you, I leave the house and all the belongings. I don't want a house. All I wanted was love. What am I going to do with the house? What about the money? Who gets the money? What's that, Jinxie? Who gets the money? Well, she does. She's the love of my life, Mary McKenna. Who's that? Who? Mary McKenna. Beautiful, isn't she? And now she's very, very rich. And now I have one last bequest, or should I say request, to Chief Amos Burke. Find Mary McKenna before whoever killed me kills her. The jolt of electricity used to kill Danny Duke was released by a voice-activated trigger mechanism. The microphone was attached to a voice recognition chip and programmed to the voice print of Danny Duke. Uh -huh. Now, the last thing Danny said before he got zapped was, are you ready for Danny? That was the trigger phrase. Yeah, try it. Let's see. Hmm. Are you ready for Danny? Close, but not close enough. Come here. I had the Criers Club send me the tape this morning. Yes. Are you ready for Danny? By using the voice recognition chip, the killer made sure that only Danny triggered the circuit. So, technically, Danny Duke killed himself. Shocking, isn't it? Now, where do you buy something like this? Oh, you don't. It's made from five components, each manufactured by a different company. Here's the list. Now, most of these companies deal almost exclusively with the military. Who made the chip? Don't know. The killer burned off the manufacturer's name and serial numbers. You're not going to let this stop you? No. But it will slow me down a bit. If it was easy, everyone could do it. Burke's Law. <laughs> there were eight Mary McKenna's in the L.A. area. I've eliminated five of them. I can't locate the other three yet. All right. I'll run a background check on everyone in Danny's will. It's happening as we speak. Don't suppose you also requested military records? No. Whoever made this may have had military training. That's one you owe me. Now what? If Danny was having an affair with the beautiful blonde who inherited all of his money, where would you start? The widow. You're getting good at this. What a great voice for Forest Lawn commercials. It's Chief Burke. Hello, Gerard. May we come in? Of course. Hey, Muzz. What a pleasant surprise. Hello, Jinxie. Do you like it? It's from Paris. You don't seem to be too broken up. I was in mourning when he was alive. Mother, please. I see you are in mourning. Well, that's his happy outfit. Um, Jinxie, can I have a minute or two with you? Well, sure. Come on up. I was just going to change my shoes. I'll talk with Gerard. Did you know I have more shoes than Imelda Marcos? <laughs> no, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. We used to go shopping together. <laughs> now I know why Danny gave you the shoe shine kit. <laughs> what I don't know is if you killed him. Uh-oh, the third degree. Did you know your husband was having an affair with another woman? Oh, I never heard the name Mary McKenna until this morning. 
But women usually know if their husbands are having affairs. Well, this wife didn't. Oh, it's no secret Danny and I hated each other. But you're going to find out a lot of people hated him. He was mean, petty, vengeful. He was an SOB. But he was my SOB. Um, there is something I should tell you. You're going to find out anyway. Since I'd signed a prenuptial agreement, I decided to take out an insurance policy on Danny. Five million dollars. That's not so unusual. No, but you might find the timing a bit suspect. When did you take the policy out? <sighs> Last week. Yeah, I'm not surprised that my father was having an affair. There was never any affection between my mother and my father. It's a miracle that I was born at all. This is a tiger swallowtail. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it's nice. Did your father ever mention Mary McKenna? Not by name. Although he had been dropping hints, mentioning there was someone he wanted me to meet. Were you and your father close? I was the only one who truly loved my father. Mother, are you all right? Fine, son. Chief Burke and I will be down in a minute. <laughs> I'm an electronics wizard. I, uh installed an intercom system that you can speak to any person at any time. Do you know how to make a voice-activated switch? Yeah. Do you have any idea who may have killed your father? You mean, if I didn't? Yeah. Unfortunately, my father had a lot of enemies. Take a guess. Pick one. Freddie Boyle. Why? Well, he and my father were having dinner. Afterwards, they were talking for a while, and then they began yelling, and then Buddy threatened to kill my father. Why didn't he tell us this as soon as your father was killed? People threatened to kill him all the time. Door is open. Come in. Bonjour, monsieur. <laughs> Don't worry, fellas. I'm not as kinky as I look. I'm the Grand Marshal for this year's Mardi Gras. Louis the Sixteenth. <laughs> you look older than that. Uh, <laughs> what can I do for you, Chief? We'd like to ask you a few questions. Ask away. What can you tell us about Mary McKenna? Mary McKenna? Not a thing. Didn't Danny ever mention her? <laughs> Hey, I didn't even know Danny had a mistress until I saw the tape this morning. Why did you threaten to kill Danny last week? Why? I'll tell you why. Because Danny was an ungrateful bastard. That's why. What happened? He's rewriting history. That's what he's doing. Just got the galleys for a new book that he wrote on radio and television comics. You know, sort of a retrospective. And he interviewed Big Hank and me. But Danny spends his whole interview trashing me, saying how I get all the credit for pioneering comedy on television. But it really didn't come of age until he got on the air. He said the only trouble with the Buddy Boyle show was the casting of Buddy Boyle. So uh, I went over to his house and I said some things that maybe I shouldn't have said. But I didn't kill him. You'd be surprised how many people tell us that. Yeah. And one of them is always lying. Good morning, boss. What's this? Fruits. Save 38 cents a pound. And uh, this? Kippert herring. Saved almost $1.30. Double coupon. 
I don't suppose you had any coupons for bacon and eggs? No, but kidney delicious, and I save 80 cents a pound. I wasn't that hungry anyway. Good morning. Good morning. Located the last three Mary McKenna's in L.A. None of them match Danny's picture, so she must live out of town. Well, look at this. Henry's been cashing in his coupons again. Good for him. I understand the kidneys are delicious. I'll take your word for it, Dad. Buttermilk. 15% off. But nobody here... If we're trying to find Danny's mistress, maybe we should talk to a woman he works with closely every day. Danny's head writer, Roxanne North. Got an appointment with her in 20 minutes. Join me? I already worked out this morning. Oh, there's no such thing as getting too much. Exercise? <laughs> that too. I wanted to ask you about Mary McKenna. Did you find her? No, what do you know about her? She's young, beautiful, and scared to death. So you know her? Nope. I just pieced together a few obvious facts. Danny showed us her photograph in his video will, so I know what she looks like. And since she hasn't come forward, I just assume that she's scared of something. Did you know that Danny was having an affair? Not exactly. But there was a rumor a few months back that Danny might jump networks, take over Hank Whitaker's spot. They offered him $10 million. He turned him down. Why is that? Word was somebody had some dirt on Danny and was blackmailing him into staying put. Somebody who knew about Mary McKenna? Somebody who had a lot to lose if Danny jumped networks? You think that's who killed him? At this point, anything's possible. You know, Peter, as a writer, I've always been fascinated by policemen. You know, men who are willing to risk their lives every day. Luckily, not every day. <laughs> I think you're being modest. You know, Peter, I'd like to spend some time with you. For research, you know. Get under your skin. Find out what it is that makes a homicide cop tick. Would you like that, Peter? I would love that, Roxanne. Wonderful. Can't. It's against department policy. Sorry. But I love that stroke. No matter how careful he is, a man who is having an affair leaves a trail. Phone calls, credit card charges, flowers, uh, a dinner, champagne. Hotel room. Dad, I have pulled this man's phone records, his credit card records, zip. Look, I even talked to Danny Duke's personal secretary. She swears she never even heard of Mary McKenna. Look at this, Burke and Burke. Could have been a law firm or a vaudeville act. Instead, you've dedicated your lives to truth, justice, and the American way. Hello, Johnny. What can we do for you? Did you hear the one about the dead talk show host? I'll just skip to the punchline. I did it. I killed Danny Duke. Why'd you kill him, Johnny? I'd been trying to get on his show for over a year. Showing up at the studio, his house, calling him, bugging him. And you figured if you bugged him enough, he'd put you on just to be left alone. Exactamente. And six months ago, my agent gets the call. I'm booked on the Danny Duke show. At the last minute, he bumps me for a juggler. And three months ago, he bumps me for a Czechoslovakian bear wrestler. 
And last week, he bumps me again for some guy and his ant farm. I asked when I was going to be on the show. Danny laughed. Never, he said. He was just seeing how much abuse I was willing to take. Well, he found out. So you killed him. And I'd do it again. How? What? How did you electrocute him? I wired the mic to the house power. And then? What difference does it make? I'm, I'm confessing. What else do you want? Details, Johnny. Proof that you killed Danny. Tell us how you rigged the microphone so everyone could touch it, but only Danny be electrocuted. I, uh... I, I used a timer. Knew Danny'd be making his speech at 9 o'clock. As I recall, Johnny, you built a reputation on uh, pranks and uh, practical jokes. Yes, but... Claiming you've seen Elvis? Everybody's seen Elvis. I sang with him, and I got the tape to prove it. Claiming you've seen Bigfoot? Happened. Claiming you've been abducted by a UFO? Last Thanksgiving. Anything to get a little press. Confess to a murder you didn't commit. Well, you'll get press all right. And jail time. Talk about a tough audience. <laughs> so it's a bad idea. Shoot me. Goodbye, Johnny. What's a guy got to do to get arrested in this town? I treated the voice recognition chip with a killer burned off the manufacturer's name and serial numbers. Mm -hmm. Now, look what happens under ultraviolet light. Wow, Tektronics Limited. They're in Silicon Valley. One of the largest suppliers of high-tech military hardware. Excellent. Contact them. Get a list of all buyers for the last year. But that would take a... <laughs> Don't even say it. What? That the list will be here by morning? <laughs> Any of our suspects serve in the military? As a matter of fact, talk show host Big Hank Whitaker was a Special Forces Commando in Vietnam. A trained killer. Danny's sidekick, Jerry Mars, was a Navy intelligence operative for several years, and Harry Waters was G2. Any of those three could have understood voice-activated technology. And don't forget Gerard Duke. He knows all about electronics, too. Who had the most to lose if Danny Duke was offered Big Hank Whitaker's time slot? Big Hank Whitaker? Why don't you audition Big Hank? See if he fits the part of the killer. You're dead. I'm going to tear you apart with my bare hands. Big Hank, you've seen the ratings since we started doing Big Hank's stupid stunts. Look, I don't mind being shot out of a cannon or jumping a motorcycle through a ring of fire, but having an elephant walk on my head, that's not stupid. That's idiotic. The elephant is trained. Tell him. The elephant is trained. Tell him she's done it a thousand times. She's done it a thousand times. Oh, you two are good. You should go on tour. Hank, 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 Hank. It's safe. Trust me. My producer uses the four-letter word trust. Now I know I'm dead. Excuse me, Mr. Whitaker. I was wondering if we could have a few minutes. Detective Burke, right? Right. Uh, sure, kid. Hey, come on over and get in my office. All right, Detective. Uh, what can I do for you? Well, we've been hearing some rumors about Danny Duke jumping networks. Well, wait a minute. You're not going to use that as a motive for murder, are you? It had crossed my mind. Well, cross it off. I mean, first of all, uh, just because Danny Duke is dead, that doesn't mean the network's not going to drop me. And second, there are a lot of people to be out of a job if Danny had jumped networks. Like who? Well, like uh, his writer, Roxanne North. She'd have gone south. The sidekick, Jerry Mars, for sure. Harry Waters, oh, finished. He's burned so many bridges at this network. No, there'd be a lot of people standing in the unemployment line. Along with yourself. Ha-ha, <laughs> not anymore. My ratings have been going up, up, up. Don't suppose you know anything about Danny's mystery woman, Mary McKenna? No, from her picture, she's much too good-looking for Danny. He never mentioned her? Not to me. Um, the only person he might have mentioned her to is uh, Jerry Mars. Jerry's about the closest thing Danny had to a friend. All right, Hank. You want proof this gag is safe? You got proof. Watch. This watermelon is your head. <laughs> and you were worried. <laughs> Ah! 
Stick around, detective. I may kill these two. I am the captain of this ship, and you are my crew, are you not? Yes, sir, Captain Mars, sir. First mate, do you like your job? Yes, sir, I do, sir. Second mate, will you tell me why this boat looks like a dirty old tub? Because we don't work hard enough, sir. That is a correct evaluation. Ahoy! Permission to come on board, Captain Mars. Mission granted. Third mate, pipe them on board. Hello, Amos, Peter. Hi. Hey, good lip, hon. Huh? Welcome, <laughs> welcome aboard. aboard. Let's go out. Thank you. Dames at sea, Jerry. It's a bit much, isn't it? <laughs> One of the advantages of becoming rich is you can afford to live out your own fantasies. <laughs> During the war, I used to sit on deck dreaming about commanding my own ship with a crew that looks just like that. To Jerry the Fox Mars, Chester Nimitz. You knew Admiral Nimitz, Jerry? Very impressive. It was my honor to serve under him for two years. Is that where you got your training in electronics? Yes, I was a radio man. Intercepted and decoded enemy transmissions. The Admiral used to call me his secret weapon. Jerry the Fox. His fox in the hen house. Now I got my own hen house. How are you going to pay for the chickens now that you'll be out of a job? <laughs> Do I look worried? I put a few bucks away over the years. Besides, I can always do commercials or voiceovers. Did Danny talk to you about Mary McKenna? No. And he usually told me everything. Did he ever tell you that he was being blackmailed? No. But I knew he was worried about something. You know, I thought it was just whether we should switch networks or stay put. That's me. Excuse me. Do you have a theory on who killed Danny? Yes. Did you know Jinxie took out a life insurance policy on Danny just last week? Five million dollars worth. And did you know the insured has to sign a form acknowledging he knows about any life insurance policies taken up by a third party? I know that. Well, I was with Danny when he signed that form. It bothered him, I could tell. It made him nervous. But Danny made a joke. He said Jinxie must be planning on killing him. Well, I'm starting to think Maybe it wasn't a joke. I know that look. You see, I got an A in algebra look. I had Sacramento run a DMV check on Mary McKenna's photograph. We found her. So what are you doing here? Policeman. Look, I'm just reaching for my ID. I'm sorry. Ever since Danny was killed. I know, he was worried about your safety. That's why I'm here. I want to ask you a few questions about your affair. Affair? You think we were having an affair? Well, yeah. I... Danny wasn't my lover. He was my father. So I grew up in Kansas City. My mother was a teacher. Do you want some sugar? No, thank you. I always thought my father died in a fire, a hero. Then he managed to save my mother when she was pregnant with me. I was killed when he went back for the dog. The house burnt to the ground. Not a single picture of him left. At least that's what I was told. 
Then last year, my mother got sick. Cancer. But before she died, she finally told me the truth. That my father was not only very much alive, but that he was Danny Duke, America's favorite talk show. Look, Mary, if you don't want to talk about this, I understand. No. It's okay. It's... It's just I finally found out who my father was, and now he really is dead. Anyway, uh, Danny Duke was filming a movie in Kansas City 21 years ago. My mother was an extra in the film, and they had a short yet hot, obviously, productive affair. But she never told him she was pregnant. He never knew I even existed. Then after my mother died, I, uh, I decided to write him a letter. I didn't expect him to respond. But he did. Yeah. And he flew out to see me. We spent a whole weekend together. He wanted to see all the pictures of me growing up and all my mom's old home movies. He was trying to make up for lost times. He even asked me to move out to the West Coast, but I, I couldn't because of my work. And then six months ago, I got the chance to transfer to our Santa Barbara office, and I took it. Why didn't Danny tell his family about you? He was afraid that if someone found out he had an illegitimate daughter, he'd lose all his sponsors. Somebody did find out about you, didn't they? Somebody was blackmailing your father. Yeah. Who? He didn't know. He just told me that if anything ever happened to him, to be extra careful. He even got me the gun. He was more worried about me than himself. I just wish he'd been more worried about himself. Imagine growing up for 21 years thinking you didn't have a father, and then one day you wake up and find out you do. What about Danny's shock and regret? To have a daughter and never know, all those years lost. Did I ever tell you how cute you looked in your little league outfit? Dad, please, not the baseball story. Henry, remember how adorable Peter looked in his Dodger outfit? Cute as a button. Let's see. Danny Duke turned down $10 million to jump networks. Why? Because he was being blackmailed. Question. Are the blackmailer and the killer one and the same? Answer, good question. Jinxie had five million reasons to kill Danny. And her son had the expertise. Danny was going to clean house. He wasn't going to take Roxanne North, Jerry Mars, or his producer, Harry Waters, with him. And Danny's competitor, Big Hank Whitaker, would have been kicked off the air. And let's not forget Johnny Lake, who already confessed to the crime. Maybe he's smarter than we'd like to think. Maybe his confession was the smartest move of all. I'm getting a headache. Now, if all of the pieces of the puzzle don't fit, you don't have all the pieces. Burke's Law. You know, I can remember your dad sitting at this very desk when he first started. I remind you of him, right? Not a bit. Here, your list of computer chip buyers just came in from Tektronix. Thanks. Mm. Thanks. What's the matter, son? Home team loses. Just got the list from Tektronix, 39 names. Not one of them matches any of our suspects. I really thought this was going to be the missing piece. So did I. Now what? We talk to Lily, see if there's anything in that little black box she could have missed. <laughs> if no Martin Tuttle, run his alias, Martin Truman. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? <laughs> bye bye, Danny. Hate to say goodbye. After the dance number, we'll go to the film montage spanning Danny's entire career, and then we'll come back for the individual tributes. Mm -hmm. 
So this, this nurse goes into the doctor's office and says, you know, doctor, there's a patient in the waiting room, and he says he's the invisible man. And the doctor says, tell him I can't see him. <laughs> you know, they say there are only 12 basic jokes in the world. Listening to you, you wonder what happened to the other 11. It's very clever coming from the unfunniest man in TV. You want to talk about funny? I'll give you something you to laugh about. I'll tell you what. Somebody in here is a murderer. Jinxie, did you know that you can't collect the $5 million insurance policy you've been convicted of murder? I didn't kill Danny. I know that. The money's all yours. Your father left you something else besides a house, Gerard. Really? Like what? A half-sister. Cool. Mary McKenna wasn't Danny's mistress. She was his daughter. His daughter? Yes. And only one person who knew the truth. Was the one person who was closest to Danny. His friend. What are you looking at me for? How'd you find out, Jerry? Over here, Danny, on the telephone? Follow him one weekend to Santa Barbara? It doesn't matter. You knew. And when Danny was offered the opportunity to switch networks without you, you used Mary to blackmail him. <laughs> you were in the wrong line of work, Amos. You ought to be a comedian. But then Danny decided to jump networks anyway. Didn't he, Jerry? Will you listen to this guy? Yeah, you almost got away with it, Jerry. The voice recognition chip was purchased through Tektronics Limited, but your name wasn't on file. Your real name, that is. But on, let's see. Yes, the 16th of September. Gerald Fox, Jerry the Fox, your Navy nickname, purchased the chip in question. Sent to a post office box in the marina, your post office box. Jerry, you're under arrest for murder. You know how many times I heard him say, are you ready for Danny? Every day of every week for 19 years. And after all that time, my friend was going to dump me. Just like that. Do you know who came up with, are you ready for Danny? Me. You know who wrote his jokes? Me! You know who, who held his hand when he was feeling low and pumped him up every time he went on stage? Me! And who was he going to dump after all that time without even saying thank you very much? Me! Well, I decided. If he was going to dump me, he was going to say, are you ready for Danny? Just one last time. Take him away. <laughs> 